Welcome back. In this section, we're going to take a look at our first derivative test. What our first derivative test will do is help us um, learn about the original function. Where is it decreasing? Where is it increasing? Where are their maximum values? Where are their minimum values? Um, first of all, um, what happens in this, and it's, it's, it's a fairly simple derivative test, what gets harder or easier on these problems is the derivative itself. If we can find the derivative, it's not too bad. The first derivative is greater than 0, then we know that the original function um, so if the first derivative here is greater than 0, then we know that the original function f is increasing on the interval from a to b. And if it's the first derivative is less than 0 or negative in, uh, for all x and a, b, then we know that f is decreasing on the interval from a to b. Notice that on my endpoints, the a to b, whether it's increasing or decreasing, we include these endpoints. Our book does that. Um, there's a great debate in the calculus community about whether we include those points or don't include those points. We'll take a look at that a little bit more closely in class. So the first step in these problems is to find the derivative. When I give you a problem like this, um, you know, if I give you an easy polynomial function, we find that derivative f prime of x is going to be 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. And then from there, what we want to do is we want to find our critical values or our critical numbers. So we need to find our critical numbers by setting this derivative equal to 0. Go ahead and factor it. So it's going to be 3x squared. Um, the factors 3 times negative, negative 5 is negative 15, and the factors of negative 15 that will add to give me positive 2 are going to be plus 5x and then minus 3x minus 5. Factor by grouping. Um, in this first part, first group, I have an x in common, and I get 3x plus 5. In the second part, I have a negative in common, so or a minus 1. I have to write that as 3x plus 5. Oh, where the heck is my... There we go. Sorry, 3x plus 5. Group them together, so I get x minus 1 times 3x plus 5 equals 0. So I have my critical values at x equals 1, or um, x equals negative 5 thirds. Once I have those values, then what, end up, what ends up happening is I need to make that little number line chart from way back in the first unit. If I make my little number line chart, I want to know where their product is going to be um, greater, in this particular case, greater than 0 or less than 0. So I'm going to put my factors in 3x plus 5 and x minus 1. 3x plus 5 has a 0 at negative 5 thirds. And um, x minus 1 has a 0 at 1. Um, here, this has a 0 on that side, it's negative over here, it's positive over here. In 1, this has a 0 at 1, it's negative on the left, and it's positive on the right. Be careful that it's not always negative on the left and positive on the right. If I were to switch, like if it was 1 minus x, the positives and negatives will switch. And now what I have to do is I have to see, okay, where is their product negative, where is their product positive? In this particular case, on this first interval from negative infinity over to negative 5 thirds, it's a negative times a negative, so that's going to be positive. The derivative is positive. So the original graph is increasing on the interval from negative infinity over to negative 5 thirds. And at negative 5 thirds, we're going to include that because that's what our book does. The AP folks will accept it either way, inclusive or not inclusive. On the interval from negative 5 thirds to 1, it's a negative times a positive. So it's decreasing on that interval. So negative 5 thirds up to 1. And then on this final interval between 1 and infinity, it's positive times a positive. So it's increasing there from 1 to infinity. So that tells us where it's increasing and decreasing. And we can also use this to find out whether it's going to be um, whether it's going to be a local max or a local min. We'll do that in our next one where we find our, our uh, derivatives and where they're changing from being negative to positive or positive to negative. Really, these problems get more or less difficult based upon how hard it is or how easy it is to find that derivative. Let's take a look at some more stuff here. Um, first of all, if the derivative changes, if, if, so we have a critical number at f, that's where the derivative is 0 or not defined, and f is continuous at, at, the, fun, at the point c, and it's differentiable on the interval at i, except for possibly at c. If the derivative changes from being positive to being negative at c, 
then it's going to be a local max. If it changes from being negative to being positive at C, then it's going to be a local min. And if it doesn't have a sign change at C, then C is not a max, or it's not a local extrema of the function f. It's not a local max or a local min. If I go back to my previous example, negative 5 thirds and positive 1s, these are going to be maxes and mins because I have a change in the sign of the derivative. So right at negative 5 thirds, the derivative goes from being positive, or the graph goes from being you know, increasing at this point to decreasing. So what that shows me is that at negative 5 thirds, we have a local maximum point. So we have what we call a local max at f of negative 5 thirds. If I wanted to know what that value was, I could put the negative 5 thirds in the original function. And then over here, it's decreasing to increasing. And since the original derivative is, de or the, the the derivative is decreasing to increasing, that's a minimum value. So I have a local min at f of positive 1. It also can be very helpful for you to graph the derivative. This can give you a visual of it. If I were to graph my derivative function, um, if I were to graph my derivative function, uh, sorry, i got to move this, okay. And this is the graph of the derivative. I had put it in earlier, 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. What you can see is that um, the derivative is going to be positive over here to the left of negative 5 thirds. It's going to be negative on the interval from negative 5 thirds to 1, and then it's going to be positive again from positive 1 up to infinity. Anytime you can graph the derivatives, it's really helpful because it gives you a visual of what you're trying to accomplish or what you're trying to do. This is, remember, the graph of the derivative, which is going to be one degree less than the original equation. That's why it's a parabola and not a cubic equation. But this gives you a visual of where is it positive, where is it negative, where is it positive. We're going to take a lot more look at derivative graphs later on. Let's look at another example. Um, uh, that was the one I just went back to find the extreme. I just went back to that. Let's look at another example that's a little bit more complex. The uh, f of x equals x to the one-third power times 8 minus x. The first thing I would do before I take the derivative is I would go ahead and distribute that x to the one-third. So it's 8, 8x to the one-third minus x to the four-thirds. And then take the derivative from that. f prime of x is eight-thirds. Um, and it's x to the two-thirds, or negative two-thirds, could be down there in the denominator, minus 4x to the one-third over um, 3. And now we need to set that equal to 0 and solve it. Um, and remember that our critical values are going to occur where the original where the original derivative is 0 or where it's not defined. So when we set this equal to 0, um, if we were to go ahead and do the addition, the common denominator, or the subtraction, the common denominator is 3x to the 2 thirds. This one we didn't have to multiply by anything, so it stays as 8. This one we had to multiply by x to the 2 thirds, so it's minus 4x equals 0. Now, the derivative is going to be 0 where the numerator is 0, so 8 minus 4x equals 0. That's going to happen at x equals 2. And the derivative is not going to be undefined. It's going to be undefined where the denominator is zero. So three x to the two thirds equals zero at x equals zero. So I have two critical numbers at x equals two and x equals zero. And so if I were to take a look at my little number line chart, um, put that on the bottom, three x to the two thirds, and I have a zero at zero. And um, we'll do the signs in just a second. And then I have eight minus four x has 0 at 2. The top one's not a big deal. If you just plug in our test values, it's going to switch. It's going to be positive over here because it's minus 4x. And it's going to be negative over here because it's because of the minus 4x. But this 3x to the 2 thirds is an issue because I'm squaring it and then I'm taking the cube root. When I put in these negative values, I'm still going to get a positive. So it's positive, 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 and that's positive over here as well. So there's no sign change at 0. So when I take a look at increasing and decreasing, on the interval from negative infinity to 0, it's a positive times a positive, or a positive divided by a positive, which is increasing. So from negative infinity over to 0. And then on this interval from 0 to 2, it's also increasing. Um, because of, because the, the way our book looks at it, they include that 0. What I would do is actually it will be rewritten like this. They won't even have this breaking point. They will just say from... 
negative infinity over to 2, it's increasing. And then it's decreasing on the interval between 2 and infinity. Because there's no sign change at 0, this is neither a max or a min. It's increasing on that side. It's still increasing over here. So there's no sign change. And then over here, it becomes decreasing. So we have a local max in this case at f of 2. That 0 be kind of becomes embedded. This 0 becomes embedded in our answer because of the 3x to the 2 thirds. So I'm squaring it. It kind of becomes embedded. So um, we have an increasing interval from negative infinity to 2 and then a decreasing interval from 2 to infinity. We have a max at, at f of 2. We have no local min in this particular situation. So first derivative test, not too hard. The biggest thing, uh, biggest problem you have is, is finding these derivatives, finding the de original derivative here, and then setting them equal to 0 and solving it. If you have trouble with that, please ask. Um, the derivative is going to be 0 where the numerator is 0. The derivative is going to be undefined where the denominator is, is, is 0. Best of luck.